I recently bought one of these and this is a Mechanic DT3 board. And what this is designed to do is detect whether your USB cable can supply power and data or just power or just data. On the board you have a Type-A connector, a USB-C power in, USB-C for device under test, a lightning port, a Type-C port and a micro USB port. But this video isn't specifically about the DT3 board. This video is about one of my biggest USB-C pet peeves. And that is that this USB-C powering connector here will only work with USB A to C cables. I mean, that's ridiculous. Why, why would you do that? Why would you not spend a fraction of a cent to add the two resistors required to make that port be able to accept USB C to C? What I'm going to attempt to do today is add the two 5.1K resistors required on the CC1 and the CC2 lines. I'm going to try and add them in to make it work with a proper USB C to C cable. So I'm going to plug the A end into my power supply. I'm going to plug that end into there. See, nothing at the moment, but let's plug a Type C cable in. What it should do is pretty much light up all blue. That's more or less what it's supposed to. I don't know why T minus isn't lit. That's very odd. Anyway, I don't care. For the purpose of this demonstration, that is what it's supposed to do. Let's now swap those around and replace the USB-C cable for the power in with the USB-C to C cable. So we're just going to plug that in there. Okay, so the power is now plugged in and we'll plug our USB-A into this side here. And the other end into type C up here. And we get nothing, no lights whatsoever, because they couldn't pony up for two 5.1K resistors. The tight bastards. So I've ordered some 5.1K resistors. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt to fit them now. So the resistors have now turned up. And these are them here. You can see how small that is. So I just want to put a little bit of um, flux and solder on there and get that tinned up. And a bit of flux and solder on there and get that tinned up and see if I can solder the resistors onto this connector. I'm just going to put a little bit of flux on that one there. All right, let's see if I can at least get this tinned up. Okay, that one's done. Let's do the one on the other side. So these are both the grounds which these resistors need to be connected to. So we'll just put a little bit of that on. I need a little bit more flux for that. Do not want that getting stuck to the pin next to it. I've done some fiddly soldering in my time, but this is probably the fiddliest, I think. Right, let's see if I can get a resistor onto there then. Got to think about how I'm going to do this now. I am going to change the tip to something a little bit even smaller now. How am I going to do this? I'm not actually sure.
Well, it's on. Okay, that's the first one on. Let's put that on the end there. And see if I can just get that on now. I think I need the bigger tip for this. It's actually sinking a lot of heat. Right, that's that one on. So now we have the two resistors on there. We'll just put a little bit of solder on the end of them. And now I've got to get solder on the CC pins, which is also going to be quite fiddly. The first CC pin is the third pin in from the left, which is first, second, third of that pin there. And these are really, really fiddly. Okay. Let's see if we can do this. And the other pin is the fourth one here fourth one alone, they're not symmetrical, which quite surprised me, because I thought they would have been. that pin done. And now I need a very thin bit of wire to connect the resistors to the rest of it. So to connect it to the, uh, connect the pin to the resistor. So let's see how this goes. I kind of wish I'd bought a slightly larger resistors now. But never mind. Let's see if we can get this onto there. I'm going to try again a different tip. if I can get it on with the curved tip. Almost. Doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be kind of good enough. Couldn't they? Why could they not have done this when they made this bloody thing? Okay, I 
think that's on there. We just need to take that now. Round to here. And solder it on. And that is soldered. That needs to be soldered a little bit better. Might be soldered, but it's not soldered very well. Oh, that's better. Now we need to do the same thing for the fourth pin along from the right. I mean, why couldn't they do this? I kind of need to lay it on top of it and then solder down, I think. Kind of a bit like that. And then we're going to bring this around here. Once this is done, I'm going to put some UV solder mask on top of any in any way, which will kind of give it a bit of uh, give it a bit of holding strength. There we go. That is done. Now we can take this off. That looks like it's on okay. I've lost my scalpel, otherwise I'd be using that. I think that looks okay. And this is what the socket looks like after it's been cleaned up. Let's go ahead and test the unit now. And here we have the finished board. And you can see down here the resistors are so small, it's actually difficult to see them with the human eye. All that remains now is to plug that board in and see if it lights up. Let's go ahead and do that now. And yep, that works absolutely fine as expected. So I think that's a good mod and it makes the board... A lot more useful. Again, why Mechanic didn't do that when they made this board, I don't know. You know, for the fraction of a cent that these resistors would have cost. I just can't understand why they wouldn't do that. But there we go. You can uh, do it yourself if you have the, the time and the equipment. And uh, just something worth noting on this board, they've actually got the silk screen wrong. The, the VCC one here isn't actually VCC, it's ground. And the ground bin here is actually VCC and not ground. So uh, well done, mechanic. That was uh, pretty clever. Anyway, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.